In this video, we're going to talk about graphing sine and cosine functions with horizontal shifts. The next video will cover vertical shifts, so they do come in pairs. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is look at the equation of a sine or cosine function that has a horizontal shift. So I've written up here y equals sine of x minus d and y equals cosine of x minus d. All right, as uh, with all functions, when we have a value inside parentheses that's being added or subtracted from the x value, there is a horizontal shift associated with it. And we know that if d is positive, like in the case here, d is a positive pi, x minus a positive pi, that is a shift to the right. If d is negative, and we can rewrite this as x minus a negative pi. If d is negative, as in this case, we know that that's a shift to the left. So think of it as opposite of what you think. x minus pi moves your graph to the right. x plus pi moves your graph to the left. So with horizontal on, um, shifts, you will not be starting your period at zero and ending at two pi, so you have to be able to find the beginning and the end of your first period. So the beginning is found by setting x minus d equal to zero and solving for x. The end is found by setting x minus d equal to two pi and solving for x. Those will be after shifting the new begin and end of one of your periods. Once you find the beginning and the end, you locate the beginning and the end on the x-axis, making sure that all of your intervals are spaced evenly. It is a little bit more difficult to do this when we have horizontal shifts, but I will show you how to do that. And then find the quartile marks and label them appropriately. So we're going to walk through this very first example, and we're going to take it slow here. So here they're asking us to graph y equals sine of x minus pi over 3, and we need to graph it over two periods. So the first thing we're going to do is always we're going to find the amplitude first. Um, since a, in this case, a is located in front of sine, a is 1, b is located in front of the x, and d is being added or subtracted from the x. Um, since a is 1, our amplitude is 1. Since b is 1, when we calculate our period, it's 2 pi over b, or 2 pi. And then our phase shift, and I do use, when we move a graph, a sine function or a cosine function, left or right, that is referred to as a phase shift, a shift in the phase of that graph. And I refer to it using, instead of d, I use the Greek letter phi, because that's what I learned. We have a phase shift of pi over 3. So to find the beginning of our, um, of our period, we're going to set x minus 3, I mean x, all right, x minus pi over 3 to 0. And we're going to solve for x, so x equals pi over 3. And then to find the end, we're going to set x minus 3 to 2 pi and solve. So we get x equals 7 pi over 3. So that's the beginning and the end of our period. If I label this as pi over 3, I'm not going to have enough tick marks to find 7 pi over 3 because that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and now I'm off my graph paper. So what I'm going to do instead is I am going to cut each of these intervals in half, and hopefully that will keep me on the graph. Each one of these intervals from here to here is a pi over 3. So I have to be careful when I'm counting. This is pi over 3. To find 7 pi over 3, I need 7 of these intervals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This gives me the end marker for my period. To find the midway point, I know that I have 6 tick marks between pi over 3 and 7 pi over 3, so I count half of that 
over, and that gives me my midpoint. So that is one, two, three, four pi over three. So how do I find my quarter and three quarter marks? Well, I'm gonna erase that red tick mark there because it's not in the middle of these two. So the middle of these two is about here, and the middle of these two is about here. To find those midpoints, we're gonna take the um, midpoint of those. So I'm going to take pi over three and add it to four pi over three because I want the midpoint between these two. And so I get five pi over three divided by two, which is five pi over six. So this is gonna be five pi over six. So we're gonna do that again for the last um, quartile. If I can get this erased. All right, so I'm gonna take four pi over three and I'm gonna add seven pi over three and then I'm gonna divide that by two to get 11 pi over three divided by two, which is 11 pi over six. So I'm gonna mark that on my graph as well. And I do need to carefully label all of these quarter, halfway points, three quarter of the way points, and end points. All right, so now we have to go backwards. And I said that we had six little jumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, we need to go backwards six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna end up here for the end of our next period. And how many pi over threes is that? Well, we got one, two, three, four, five. So we're at negative five pi over three. And again, there's six marks between these. The distance, again, is still um, one of our periods. There's six marks between there. So I need to go backwards three marks. So that's one, two, three. That'll give me a negative two pi over three. Well, they don't have an, um, an even number of tick marks in between pi over three and negative two pi over three. So it's not gonna be exactly at one of these red marks. So I'm gonna find the midpoint of these. And if you do your midpoint calculation, I've already got that done in my head. You get negative pi over six. And if you do the midpoint of this, negative five pi over six, and, oh, I'm sorry, that's over three. I don't know why I wrote six. Um, if you do the midpoint calculation in negative five pi over three and negative two pi over three, you get a negative seven pi over six. And now we're finished marking off our x-axis. Our amplitude is one, so I'm gonna label one and negative one on my y-axis. And then hopefully, while you were doing your homework the other days, you were noticing that when you plugged in the beginning and all your quartile marks here, I hope you noticed that you were getting the values in this x column out. So that makes it really easy. If we remember that, we can use these as the values to graph for our beginning. This is our beginning. This is our end, our middle. This is our quarter mark and our three quarter mark. So at the beginning, sign would be on the x-axis. At the quarter mark, it will be up at one. At the halfway mark, it'll be on our x-axis again. On the three quarter mark, it's gonna be down at negative one. And at the end of the period, it's back at our x-axis or zero. And that's what our graph looks like. We are gonna repeat that graph over here to get a complete two periods of this. So in order for you to check whether you have two periods to make sure that you've labeled everything correctly. You can subtract these two quantities, seven pi over three minus pi over three is six pi over three, which is two pi. That is the distance from here to there. We can also do the same over here. We can take pi over three and subtract negative five pi over three, so pi over three minus a negative five pi over three, 
gives us a 6 pi over 3 or 2 pi. That is a complete period, right? We need to make sure that we have complete periods. All right, let's move on to our next example. All right, so let's calculate our amplitude in this case. Now we have an A value of 3, so our amplitude is the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Our B value, the number in front of X, is still 1. So when we calculate our period, we get 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. And then our phase shift, remember I call the horizontal shift of a sine or cosine function or a trigonometric function a phase shift instead of a horizontal shift. We get a phase shift of negative pi over 4 because this needs to be in the form of negative we should be subtracting, so we get negative pi over 4. Okay, so our phase shift is going to be negative pi over 4. So let's find the beginning of our first period. So we're going to set x plus pi over 4 equal to 0 and solve for x. So we get x equals negative pi over 4. And our ending mark, we'll set x plus pi over 4 equal to 2 pi. And when we solve for x, we get 7 pi over 4. Again, I don't think I'm going to have enough tick marks on my graph, so I'm going to cut everything in half. I'm going to go backwards, too, because I'll probably need these. So negative pi over 4, I'm going to mark on this tick mark as the beginning of my period. And I need to go all the way to 7 pi over 4, so this is positive pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's 7 pi over 4. And if I notice, there are 8 tick marks in between here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the middle will be 4 away from the beginning. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm at this tick mark here for my middle point. Okay, so that is going to be 1, 2, 3 pi over 4. And the midpoint of 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4. And then the mid mark for negative pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 is going to be pi over 4. So now I need to do the same thing backwards, and I'm going to count 8 of these little humps backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I am at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 9 pi over 4. And the middle mark is right here, and that's going to be at negative 5 pi over 4. And the halfway mark here is negative 3 pi over 4. And here is negative 7 pi over 4. So this was a little bit easier than the last one um, because our quartile and our three quartiles didn't have a denominator of, of three. They had a denominator of six. So as in the example before, when I plug in my beginning and my end and all my quartile marks, I get these values. So I'm going to use these values to help me graph the graph. Well, the cosine at the beginning of my graph is going to be 1, and I have an amplitude of 3, so I need to mark off 3, and I'm going to take these values in my cosine of x column and multiply them by my amplitude to get all the values I need to graph. At um, pi over 4, I am going to be at 0. At 3 pi over 4, that's going to be my middle mark. I'm going to be down at negative 3. My third, 3 quarters of the way through, I'm going to be back at 0. And at the end, I'm going to be at 1 times 3 is 3. Don't forget to multiply by your amplitude. All right, so I'm just going to duplicate those values backwards. Here's the beginning of my function, the quarter mark, halfway through, 3 quarters mark, and ending mark. All right, so that concludes this video. Watch the next one for more examples.